Hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of The Faux Show. Today is Sunday, hmm, October 11th. My name is Angela. And my name is Chris. And as most of you know, The Faux Show is not a real show. It is a social experience because I don't look at you. I look at the chat room, which I have here on my iPad. Oh, that's fabulous. I just happen to have the chat room full screen on my screen. And it's over there on a monitor where we can see ourselves, huh. but... That's lower third on the internet. It's baked into our video stream. The community is right there over jblive.tv. Lower mm-hmm. third's a technical term, so don't get all picky about it, okay? <laughs> and we have the chat room right there, and mm-hmm. that way they can interact with, the, with us Ooh. as we go. And this is a very inspired edition of The Foe. It, it is. I mean, uh, see, a lot of you don't know this, but... Uh, the entire point of the of the road trip I just went on was really just so we could do this episode. <laughs> right, right. So here I go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. No, 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 no. no I was just we have some really good apps to cover this week. Some good stuff. Yeah. I to actually, get into. I, even though I didn't go on the road trip, I have a, a couple apps as well. I'm excited. Well. I'm excited. Yeah. So where do you want to start? Uh, wherever you have right. like three pages of show docs. I do. I've never I, heard of that in faux show history. <laughs> I noted carefully. I thought we'd start with preparing to leave for your road trip. So uh, today's episode has a bit of a story arc, if you will, preparing for the road trip on the road, finding a place to crash when you get tired. I don't mean like Holy the car. Boy. I mean sleep. You might have to strip some of this out. <laughs> nah, we got this. A place to dump <laughs> okay. your tanks if you have an RV. Oh, and then goodness. last but not least, okay. a beautiful way to capture the entire thing. Jeez. How about that? Jeez, you make shows <laughs> All right, for a we, living. I just fell out. I just fell into it. So the first one. Well, and, and then I'll interject that I have some practical apps. I like <laughs> a, that. A practical app and uh, that you can use even if you're not going on a road trip. That's true. And then well, one that's up and coming that's going to be amazing. I'm going to make a disclaimer. Some of these are a little more specific for people that have trailers or RVs, mm-hmm. but it's going to work most of them for everybody. Almost all of them, too. I made sure to find the Android version and the iPhone Oh, version. look at so you. try to make sure we've... Not all one of them of mine have is, that. One of mine is, I, is iPhone only. I think one or two of mine are as well. Mm-hmm. But usually there's an Android equivalent you can mm-hmm. kind of find. In all cases, I tried to make sure that if there's sure. the same exact app, I linked it so, in the show notes. Yeah, what he's saying is show notes, stupidbroadcast.com. Scroll down, pass yep. the but pass the video. That's Housies. where that is. All right, so let's start with, you don't actually have to have an RV to use this first one, but it's called RV Checklist. Whoa. And uh, Yeah, <laughs> RV Checklist is, uh, it's basically a app that's pre-populated with most common things you need to go through before you go on a road trip, when you arrive at a place. And this would work for camping or anything like that. And what's nice about this is it gave me a pre-built list of things that maybe I should consider before I hit the road. You know, things that maybe I hadn't thought of ahead of time. because because like, you've never owned a trailer? And I've never gone on a long road trip like this before. So mm-hmm. this was a really great way for me to sort of cross my eyes, wait, cross my T's and dot my eyes. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so that's but you should all- cross your eyes while you do it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I kind of, I kind of did and I think I got a headache. Uh, and so it was also like, one of the nice things is, is chronologically I could store different information as we went through the road trip. So as we got to that section of the road trip, I had, any, I had like the map and the, the phone number and all that kind of stuff mm. available. So that's RV checklist and uh, it is 99 cents, but uh, I thought it was worth it. Now, what do you have here, Andrews? What's this one? Uh, so cornbreadapp.com is, it was covered in episode 43 of Women's Tech Radio, and it's a really cool oh. uh, app where uh, the best example that was given in the show, in, in the interview, was if you go to a skate park and you do like this awesome, t- whatever, insert term of cool thing that you can do on a skateboard. Oh, okay. Like <laughs> you know, a move. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you take video of it or your friend does and you kind of want to share it. You know, if you go home, you upload it to your YouTube, yeah. you're one of these bottom feeders that don't right. get any kind of traffic. You but know. people that are specifically going to that park might be interested in what you could do there. Exactly. So somebody that comes an hour later, they might be like, oh, I wonder what, you know, I wonder if anybody's pulled this yeah. stunt off or, yeah. or what did they do with the stuff here? Well, so it's like geo location based messages. Yeah. This app allows you to leave a message, a photo, or a video geographically located, and it's called a crumb because (laughs) of the cornbread uh, name. And uh, so, yeah, so people can go there and Hmm. just look, and there's little flags, you know, just like you would if you were tracking something. There's a little flag saying, oh, there's a crumb over here, there's a crumb over here. Yeah, yeah. And um, they can be left for specific people or for just anybody in general. And it's just, it's such a neat idea. It's going to take, like, so the city of Marysville, if if they want to promote their parks, they could be like, hey, leave your best pictures from this park. Yeah. 
make their publications, their advertisements. Like there's a whole, whole huge thing, but it's also very romantic. I could also, I, oh, I could see that. You could see leaving like a love notes for somebody. Yep. I could also see uh, like leaving little micro reviews. So, you know, you go to a state park. Yeah, and, or like, a this, restaurant. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that too, right? right? Yeah. So there's a, so it's called Cornbread or what's it called? Yeah, cornbreadapp.com. It's called Cornbread. It's named after a uh, one of the very first taggers. You know, like with spray paint taggers. Oh. As it, the guy went by cornbread, he tagged an elephant. He went to a zoo and he tagged an elephant. Wow. Yeah. So, anyway. And you guys talked to the developer on Women's the Tech creator, Radio 43. Yeah. yeah. This is created in a lab from Neologic. And uh, it's just really cool. So, yeah, check out that Women's Tech Radio. There was, there was some really cool things. And they have a second app called Poetry for Robots that <laughs> that is very, very <laughs> cool as well. Nice. All right. So one of the problems I discovered on the road trip, and you might run into this too if you're going pretty much anywhere outside some of the main corridors, is you very, very quickly lose signal. Well, guess what becomes totally useless when you don't have signal? Google Maps, Apple Maps, a whole lot of nothing. So that's why everything I, that you're using to get to your destination yeah. is that what you're saying? Yeah. So that's why <laughs> I dug up Copilot. Uh, you can find it at copilotgps.com. Available for uh, Android, iOS, Windows Mobile as well. Um, and it is le- last but not least, it is an offline GPS system. So it downloads all of the maps and oh, precaches them for genius. you. Oh, that's genius. How much is it though? The, well, that's the tricky thing, is the base app itself might even be oh, free. Oh, it's an app. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, right. I was thinking it was a thing. No, no, it's an app. The base app itself is Duh, free. this is an app show. Okay. Yeah. But <laughs> you want, so there's things you can pay for that are really nice to have upgrades. Um, so like uh, one of the things you can pay to have a, an upgrade for is truck routing. So if you have restrictions mm. on what your vehicle can fit through height. or kind mm-hmm. of height and things like that, it, w- it can give you nav directions or, specifically for trucks. Or possibly if you need to, if you want to avoid uh, way stations. Yeah, or, there's. Are you subject to way stations? No. Okay. Well, that's there, good. But there is there is like that kind of thing. It'll notify mm-hmm. all them, lay them all out in the map. Cool. Also, it has uh, obviously traffic services that are uh, its own that they've done offline. It's also very, very clear on the way it kind of communicates to you. It gives you very nice arrows well, with pictures of what it looks like. And I imagine, unlike my 2007 Acura, it doesn't, uh, it's updated. Yes. It's current. It there knows, is that. It yeah. knows which roads exist and yeah. don't, uh, and like it, up to the minute. And look how, well, this is what I really appreciated is you see how it's got three different colors schemes here. These mm-hmm. are three different routes that you oh, can yeah. take and it yeah. gives you just the nice way it lays these out and you can just tap the one you want is really mm-hmm. nice. It also can search for nearby areas and points of interest. And then there's also things like really nice voice guidance you can upgrade to. And again, this is available for uh, Android and uh, iOS. On iOS, it is 64-bit, so it runs really nice and fast too. And uh, I think uh, I think it's free on both systems. But yeah, Copilot is the name of it. And it is just having the offline maps alone is worth it. Uh, it also, you can have it, if you know, you're kind of picky like I am, like I can tone down some of the no- warnings and notifications. Like I don't need it telling me rerouting when I miss a turn or return. <laughs> yeah. Like it just reroutes. So I guess it's not like uh, good for pilots, <laughs> right? No. Wouldn't be geared no. towards pilots at all. <laughs> no, but this is kind of cool. One of the one of the add-ons you can get is like uh, a Middle East package, Brazil, Australia. Oh. So it can get, you can get, it's not just a U.S. You pay thing. extra for yeah, More it coverage? is. Well, hmm. well, you don't. Well, think about it in this way: if you're downloading these maps, you don't really need the storage. So the maps themselves are twenty-four bucks. But if you bought a regular printed map, it would be more than that. These are, yeah. you own these offline maps once you buy them and they get updates and all that kind of stuff. Okay. And it comes with all the voice stuff for that particular routing. And right. so it's, right. it's nice. It's co-pilot okay. and you can just kind of upgrade it as you need it. All right, Andrews, you got a weather app. I love this weather app. Yes. Okay. So dark sky, don't go anywhere without it. I oh use it all the time. I used it yesterday two times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was raining like crazy yesterday. It's seriously. And I know that they're working on an Android version. Um, yeah. You can also use forecast.io on Android, which uh, which Does pulls from the same, okay, it's the yeah. same data sources right. as dark sky. So it's literally down to the minute and it has, look, it has a compass. It has like wind. It has, yeah. it has a ton of stuff. Yeah. You and can uh, you can get like, so if you want to know, can I go walk the dog or walk the kids or go out and unload yeah. the truck, you can say, all right, well, if I wait 10 minutes, the rain's going to go away. Yeah. And how much is it going to rain? Yeah. I've used it. It's it's seriously been invaluable for walking the trail. Push or notifications as well for if you're about to get a heavy rainstorm, you can say, if it's about to pour, give mm-hmm. me a push notification. If it's going to sprinkle, don't bother notifying me. And then also that court, have you ever used the dark sky app on your watch? 
No. Yep, there's Dark Sky for the watch, too. I'll be nope. right back. I'm going to go grab the sandwich. You keep talking but, about Dark Sky. Um, well, so it has the forecast for the week, and it's just as accurate as the weatherman, you know? So it's it's not. But it is. it does seem to be a little closer, and uh, I have used it to plan my weekends and stuff. But most specifically, I'm using this in this uh, in the fall season to make sure that, you know, can I go to a pumpkin patch, or is it going to rain? Um, how fast is it cooling down? Things like that. And you don't even, it uses GPS, obviously, to pinpoint exactly where you're at. But if you want to say, um, you know, at two o'clock, I'm going to be in Snohomish. Yes. It, it, you can tell it, yeah. look in Snohomish and tell me what the weather will be like I there. I use this the entire point. road trip all Did the you? time. Oh, yeah. the entire oh, road good. trip. Yeah. yeah. So, but it's not in your list. It actually isn't. No. <laughs> yeah. you so you fail. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you know, it's funny because you don't really think like, oh, a weather app, that's so worth it. Um, but it, it, it's actually, it's just, it's a rain app and maybe this is a bigger deal here. Where yeah, we're actually. At. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you know, what's funny is we don't get nearly as much rain as like no, any other state. Except for it was raining so it much was. yesterday it was and I got soaked yeah, you like did. three solid times. I got soaked yesterday. That's what she said. Hello. All right. So this <laughs> is one of the top apps of the whole batch and again, available for both iPhone and Android. And I think there's a web component too. It's called all stays, all stays.com. It's for huh. camping hotel rooms, oh. and drivers. All right, tell me about this. 29,000 campgrounds in here, all right? Uh, Holy they, crap. They really? have, like, basically every independent truck where, stop, Flying J, any place you can stop at. Where's your phone? Uh, in my, uh, oh. Where is my phone? I don't know. I don't know, oh, actually. Oh, right, you're hyperlapsing. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I, that's I funny. Think, you should, she should slow down at that point. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, so, so check this out, though, all right? So uh, now it's, this is a little tricky because in the app stores, it's called two different things. So I really want to Damn. draw your attention to this. Uh, camps and RV campgrounds plus in the oops sorry in the Android app store, mm -hmm. and it's something like uh, it, actually that's what it's called in the it's actually what it's called in the iPhone. Okay, app store I don't know what it does yet. All right, so this is maybe actually they have a little video. Maybe I'll play it and see what the video tells us. I love that. Let's see. A tumbleweed doesn't plan far ahead. Is it calling me a tumbleweed ant? <laughs> a tumbleweed stays flexible. <laughs> yeah, it is. Wow, heavy books, outdated info. Slow research. Sounds these are, like our libraries. This is not things I want. Buy again and again. I don't want these things. Most websites and apps need the web for data and ads. Yeah. Wow. I like how they parentheses. Leaving that. mini campers in the dark. Oh, I'm sold. <laughs> A. Now allstays.com changes the way you travel. Oh, I like the Camp fire. and RV. There you go. So uh, wander your way. And I guess this also has an offline component, which I wasn't even going to really talk about. Yeah. Um, so it is here. I'll show you the UI, and you can probably guess it. So you see these different icons here. Yeah. The t these are tent sites. These are like camp, huh. like woodland sites. These are no parking sites. These are like uh, dump sites. So you have all the different types of sites, that, uh, places you can just park at and sleep. They have also user reviews in here, so they can say, yeah, you can park here and spend the night. It's going to be kind of expensive, though. Uh, they take tents. They take cars. They take RVs. They tell you what kind of hookups are available. So if there's power, if there's um, if that's, there's sewer, that's hookups. Yeah, not yeah. not <laughs> not hookups, <laughs> but a hookup, yeah. you know. Uh, and if it has Wi-Fi, if it has laundry, oops, there's my screen. If it has laundry, Wi-Fi, if it's pet friendly or not, if you're traveling with pets, these mm -hmm. are all things you have to know when you're on the road. Mm -hmm. And this one app tells you everything about these different locations with a map overview. You can also break it down and say, I just want to look at campsites. I just want to look at military friendly sites. I just want to look at pri uh, WalMarts and public lands. Yeah, you can actually stay at WalMarts. Um, Oh yeah, yeah, you can because I thought they just eliminated that. It if it's a Walmart Supercenter, you you uh -huh. just have to double check. But a Walmart okay. Supercenter is generally allow staying. Now there's Walmart Supercenter by our house, which does not allow overnight parking, but okay. some of them do. And there's actually an All Stays app specifically that allows for to check just for Walmart parking lots that allow you to sleep overnight in their parking lot. You're just supposed to check with the management first. It's a real thing. Uh, so All Stays is it is a great app if you're driving, camping, whatever, trucking, whatever. This you, you keep this on your phone, and then if you ever need to find a place to stay or camp or park really quick or a place to go to the bathroom even, All Stays. Just pull it okay, up. Okay, so it's fly. primarily locate a place to stay mm -hmm. and see what people have said about it. Yep, user reviews, how much is going to cost you, all of that sure. from one spot, okay. plus their phone cool. number. So like, cool. uh, if you decide, okay, this is a place we do want to stay at, here's the address, you tap that, it launches into your favorite Looks nav like it has app. a weather mm -hmm. thing built into it too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tells you what the weather's like there. Here's the overall user reviews. If there's been images of the campsite, you, mm -hmm. you tap this one button, you get pictures of the campsite. Oh, that's cool. It is very, very nice. And of course, if you tap this, it can have you navigate <laughs> there using... Waze. 
Yeah, I was wondering, did you use Waze at all? On, Not on as trip? much because data oh. was so scarce, but I love Waze. So like whenever I'm driving around here, I use Waze. Mm -hmm. And you know, they just added Stephen Man, Colbert's you voice. You could have gotten, oh really? It's yeah. one of the, you, uh, you could have gotten, what, isn't it Karma? Uh, yes, you're right. I would have gotten a ton of karma. And mm -hmm. yeah, Waze has like a gamification aspect to it. Yeah. Yeah. So Waze uh, is, everybody knows Waze, I guess, but it's a yeah. social GPS traffic system. So you can see based on the traffic of others um, yep. and their input where cops are, or red lights. Yep, it's like social. That. But the thing is, you're not supposed to be on your phone while you drive. The one nice, so. one really nice thing about Waze is if you're, uh, actually I might've used it once when I got uh, back into Seattle, actually. No, mm -hmm. no, no. It was a road sign. Uh, so we were, we were coming into Seattle on I-90, and we were about to get off on 405, and there was a big sign that said three-hour backup on 405. Oh. Well, if you think about it, when you're pulling 5,000 pounds of trailer, the last thing you really want to be in is a stop-and-go traffic, stop-and-go mm -hmm. traffic, because mm -hmm. it's a lot to stop and a lot to get going and a lot to stop. Right. And so we decided to take I-90 over the bridge and onto I-5 and then come up I-5. Mm -hmm. And Waze is a great example. If you are pulling or hauling something, you really want to be out of traffic. And so that helps you stay clear of it in, cool. a, in a really nice way. So Google you, Maps you quickly looked up I-5 I traffic and saw it wasn't as backed up as 405? Well, we just kind of took a, a bet. Mm -hmm. There was a road sign because the traffic was so bad that said I-405, 305. Yeah. Um, you know why? No. Because they changed the carpool lanes to toll. Yeah, yeah. I do yeah. know that. And so, and you can only, they're double white lines now, so you can uh, only get in it at like at two spot. different places. Yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah. So just, ugh, and you have to pay. Um, the um, the co-pilot app that mm -hmm. I was showing yeah. has its own traffic service too. Oh, which cool. Is nice. But Waze is nice because but it tells you about cops and I red lights and co-pilot was supposed to be offline though. If you have online, it'll do. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. But the nice thing is it's not using your data to pull down map data. It's right, just getting the right, traffic. Right, just stuff. the traffic, yeah. yeah. So, and so something to track while you're on the road, while you're moving, is your mileage. Now, there's a ton of apps to do this. This is the one that I played around with, Mileage Keeper. It's a really nice, and one of the things that it has that a lot of the other mileage tracker apps don't have for iOS is it's updated for their newer iOS look. All the other ones look like they're, you know, all uh, what, what, skeuomorphic. Mm -hmm. uh, so this one's a nice one. It's really simple. However, this isn't actually what I used in the long run because it's very, very manual. And anything that I generally do manual, I tend to be a spaz about. He doesn't do. Well, I just, yeah. <laughs> so I want to <laughs> talk about. How can I pay someone or something to do this for me? That's. Automatic. So automatic is exactly <laughs> that. Uh, automatic, what it does is it plugs into the ODD, ODB2 port oh, of yeah, your car. Oh, yeah. You got it out of your truck, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's basically if your car's made since 1996, you probably support this. And this ODB2, ODB2 port gives out information like your mileage, your acceleration, your current speed, how hard you're braking. All of these kinds of things that are nice to collect when you're on a very long road trip. And they're kind of small, so they would fit in like oh, yeah. in my stocking for oh, Christmas, right? Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they would. I mean, but they're really big, so no, they wouldn't. Yeah. I mean, no. <laughs> uh, so you put it in there, and then it pairs up over Bluetooth. Uh, it draws power from the car's port, and it pairs up with Bluetooth to your phone. I think it uses Bluetooth LE. And then you get a status report of how well your driving's been, how much it costs you to go from point A to point B every single time. So I would know how many miles we drove from one stop to the other stop, how much that specific drive cost us. And I could also know, okay, well, when we drove 70 miles per hour, we got this amount. Of, we got we, It cost us this much gas as versus when we drove 65. Now, what's nice about this for me is it's doing the math for me. It's saying mm -hmm. this drive cost you $14 based on GPS and the average gas prices of where you're located at right now. We've averaged out the gas price. This particular region of driving cost you $14. And instead of me having to go, well, I got 12 miles to the gallon and I drove 125 miles, you know, whatever. It just does it for me. And then it gives me a daily status report and it gives me a weekly status report. And I can use that to aggregate how the truck's running. I don't know why I don't have one already. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> I re the new one, the new one, Ange, is even cooler. So yeah. I don't have the new one. So the new one integrates with services that are really cool, like FreshBooks oh, for, for billing. Wow. Yeah. Uh, oh, my Expensify. gosh. That's cool. Yeah. Expensify does it. Also, if this, then that, which is a really cool once I arrive somewhere, take these actions kind of stuff. Yeah. Like if the ignition is turned on, automatically do this on my phone. Yeah. I was sold a long time ago. Yeah. So, so it's called, you go to <laughs> automatic.com. And uh, you can 99? get it. It's, it's ninety nine okay. bucks. Although the, the uh, nicer model is more. No, I don't think so. The I think of it, it might be it's just slash ATP. The Accidental Tech Podcast has a promo code. Oh yeah, sweet! If you go to slash ATP, I think you get yeah uh, twenty yeah. dollars off. So it's seventy nine ninety six. And that's they're a nice podcast. So support them. And then if they ever become a sponsor with us, then use our promo. Code. And you know what's funny is we once got their stickers. Yeah, that's what actually made me think of it. Is yeah. so what I was talking about. Oh. Is we were doing a batch of swag. 
and uh, we got the Accidental Tech Podcast swag. And so I've and, kind of yeah. followed them since then because it was kind of like, oh, look at that. That's kind of weird. We mm-hmm. were ordering stickers and they were passing in, like ships in the night. And so I, when I checked them out, I noticed they had a discount and that's when I ordered mine. Ah. So it's been like since then. How long yeah. ago was that? Like A couple years, at least. Two wow, and a half. No, really? Yeah. Wow. Was it yeah, been I that think long? So. Yeah. Jeez Louise. So I've well, had, I mean, think it's been about, all a year maybe. No, well, no, think about it. Like, cause uh, JB, remember JB asked for permission to remove it. So it was that long ago when we brought your truck to, to his place. All right. Okay. Yeah. So there you go. It's automatic at automatic.com. All Sweet. right. So I got kind of a couple of quick ones. I just thought maybe I'd bust through really fast. Okay. There's a couple of different ones to solve this particular issue. I liked this particular app because it was so simple. Field tester. So once you arrive somewhere, it's a big, big, big issue to make sure you actually have decent connectivity. A lot of hotels, a lot of camping sites, a lot of rest stops offer free Wi-Fi. But free Wi-Fi could basically mean uh, a router dangling from a cord in somebody's <laughs> closet. Right. It really means nothing. And plus, sometimes you don't have any Wi-Fi and you just want to know how good is your cellular connection in this area? What kind of data speeds can you expect? Field Tester by Staircase 3, and there's similar ones. I'm going to tell you about another one for Android. This is a down and dirty field testing app. It's not pretty. It's really meant for people that understand what latency is, what signal is. So it'll give you in decibels what your cell signal is. And uh, it's usually for me around between negative 113 and negative 90 dB. That's pretty normal. And then in the other column, you get what your exact latency is on that network, whether it's Wi-Fi or your cellular data network. Uh, You can run specific field test performance results without having to go to like a speed test app separately. You get the SSID and you get the longitude and latitude of your current Wi-Fi access point or the cellular antennas you're using. And you can turn on continuous testing so you can move around and determine if where you're repositioning the phone actually improves your signal or not. So this is a really, really nice app when you're trying to get good connectivity, like say do a podcast. Mm-hmm. And you can also have it do background cl- information collecting. Uh, you can have it uh, do ping tests, and you can specify where it pings. I By default, it pings Google DNS, I believe, or something like that. Uh, so that is Field Tester, available for iOS. And this next app is available for Android and iOS, and it's called Open Signal. And this is by the Open Signal Project. They're trying to do their own mapping of where cell coverage is good. We're, Screw what the cellular ki- cellular companies say. This is user generated. Ten million users are generating a coverage map using Open Signal. And one of the really nice things about Open Signal is it has a really simple, like compass like GUI. You see that little triangle right yeah. there? Mm-hmm. That if that walk that way for yes, signal. Yeah. It orbits around and it's this is cool. the go this direction to get closer to your tower. Um, and then of course one screen over, it has built in speed testing and it gives you your right here in one section, it gives you what your current mil- uh, d- data milliseconds is, so you know what kind of latency you're gonna get. And then one tab over, it gives you all of the free Wi-Fi locations near you. So if you want to go jump on somewhere that has free Wi-Fi. And then, of course, it has a test, which is a really nice test app. And what I like about that is it gives you, if you're just, if you're not super savvy, it says, well, if you want to use web browsing, the connection is going to be like a five-star, six-star connection for this. If you plan to do VoIP, though, it's going to be a three-star connection. Don't expect it to be very good. Breaks it down in simple terms, but at the same time, it's also still giving you your latency, your download speeds, and your upload speeds. Well, again, without having to launch a separate app or going to find some website to do the testing. And again, it does Wi-Fi or cellular. So that is Open Signal. It's a really great group, and this app is available for iOS and Android. And I'll give a plug too for Wi-Fi Analyzer on Android if you find some Wi-Fi. Okay. So, yeah, getting good signal was a key part. Now, once you get somewhere and you get to work, you know what you start doing? You start pooping. You're pooping. Yeah, you're going to the bathroom. <laughs> you're pooping. You're pooping. <laughs> so, Sandy Dump. Sandy Dumps. Now, this is more for you guys that have trailers. This is an app. <laughs> or just Or like RVs. <laughs> or, well, yeah. Uh, and what it does is it shows you all the places you can go dump your poo and your pee, <laughs> your pee. and your gray tanks. Which you actually have to dump your gray tank more than you'd probably have to dump your, dump your black tank. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, this finds them near you, which is really nice because here's the way this goes. Oh, I need to take a shower. Oh, the gray tank is full. Okay, I've got 15 minutes to dump this and then go take my shower. So this is a really nice app that finds it for you. You drive there and then you can dump. Nice. Yeah. And again, that's just more specific for uh, RVers. I've got like way more apps. I know. In the thing. But there was <laughs> one more in the show notes. Okay. There's one more app. Yeah, of course. I got to cover. I got to cover. This has been the number one feedback on the rover log too. Is what are you using mm-hmm. to get the hyperlapses of the road? It's funny they're calling them hyperlapses because it's literally the app name. It's called Hyperlapse. It's from <laughs> Instagram, yep. and it's only available for iOS. Uh, Hyperlapse creates amazing time lapses, and that is way underselling it because what is actually really great about Hyperlapse isn't the fact that it captures footage really quick. That's not all that novel. It's actually Instagram's in-house custom-built stabilization. 
that makes it so you don't need to have a monopod or a stabilization, uh, um, uh, like a three-way stabilizer. You don't have to worry. About, I mean, you have to kind of be as steady as possible. But they are doing amazing, amazing bump reduction and jiggle reduction. You know, which jiggle. Is really, they, they take care of that. Depending that on jiggle. your content. <laughs> yeah, and so you you walk away with some really, really great shots. Like this is a hyperlapse, just holding it up to the windshield as we drive down. And you can see the Grand Tetons in the background there as we come around the roads. And one of the things that's really good at is finding the things that don't move in the shot a lot. And it's mm-hmm. like the road in a way, you know, it. Wow. OK. OK, YouTube. Thank you. <laughs> like just, yeah. I like that it goes to old school like uh, <laughs> snow, too. That's that's really cool. Wow. Uh, here, let me. Uh, so uh, here, I'll play again for a little bit just because it's uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, so it looks familiar thought that these were simulations when they first started playing in the rover log. Oh, yeah, And no. they do, some of them do, like this looks... This, like stock. Doesn't this look like stock footage? Yeah. And this is, this is just us driving with a cell phone uh, held up to the windshield mm-hmm. uh, as, we, uh, as we arrive at the Grand Tetons. Well, and, and here, we, right, so we're turning, you can see that turn. Look how cool that turn looks yeah. as we pull up to uh, the campsite and then stop. And, and, you know, so that's right there. That's probably 45 seconds mm-hmm. in real time, how long we were, he- we were stopped the car. But because mm-hmm. the hyperlapse is sped up so much, it feels like three seconds. Mm-hmm. So for every, like, five seconds of hyperlapse you want, you have to get almost, like, 30 seconds of real-life footage. So that's something to keep in mind. Right. But it is such a neat way to get the road. We might be able to put the hyperlapse of this show at the end of this show, right? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Let's if, try that. Do you know if it's actually hyperlapsing right well, now? Well, I just well no, I just kind of hit the record and put it up there. Yeah, <laughs> so, so you might have bumped it. Yeah. It might not be okay. <laughs> That's happened a couple of times it, actually. There might be some there hyperlapse be, yeah. of the behinds of us. Yeah. If it is, it is a great iOS app, and it seems to be unique to iOS. And I'm thinking it's probably because of just the camera difficulties on Android, but I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, and I've looked. You the can Microsoft just leave off camera. One. Just difficulties. Ouch. Ouch. Anyways, really cool app from Instagram. It's called Hyperlapse. Yeah. All right, Andrew. So we'll have links to all of that stuff. Yes, and more. Yeah. And more, apparently. Yeah. So um, that is it. Um, You know, I guess it would be good to mention that uh, we are recording a batch of faux shows today. Yeah. So if you made it to the end of this one, (laughs) there's probably going to be another one next week. Yeah. We've already recorded three more. So ideally. Yes. Yeah. And you still have a chance to go download Distance, the uh, beta game that's out for Linux, Mac, and Windows, uh, because we're going to be playing Distance probably in the last episode of the batch, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you have a chance to go get it and play it yourself, and then you can play along with us, you know, metaphorically. Yes, right. We're playing along with the live stream, but you can check it out and watch us fail with you. (laughs) Okay. That is it for this episode of The Faux Show. We'll see you next week. Yeah. (laughs) Well, I was going to say that, but we won't see them next week. No, they'll see us. Okay. We'll see. You'll see us next week. We'll see you next week. Did you enjoy this photo show? Well, guess what? You can catch more at jupiterbroadcasting.com and subscribe to the weekly RSS feed. As soon as I'm doing a spot because ting.com. Oh. Bark, 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 bark. <laughs> bark, 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 bark. Every single time. <laughs> Digital Ocean. <laughs> bark, 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 bark. <laughs> hey, hey, this is up your alley. What? It's a place called, uh, according to Tyler, Taco John's. What about Taco John's? I don't know. Do I saw several Taco, Taco John's. Oh, yeah, did you? Oh! Oh! Oh my god. So I'm in Montana. So what do you know about Taco Time? Like when you think Taco Time, what do you think? Oh yeah, my dad already told me this. What? Because you know, oh. it's it's a central central US thing. What? I don't know, but I know it. <laughs> what are you talking about? What are you This all used to be wildlife. This all used to be trees.